both. Time now is 6.15, Friday morning. The Chancellor Rishi Sunak is cutting short a trip to the United States to instead hold crisis talks with business leaders whose industries have been hit by cancellations because of Omicron. Now, some of those eager to hear from the government are pub and restaurant owners. Perhaps should have been having a bumper day. It was the last proper Friday, of course, proper Friday night before Christmas, just today. Might not look that way. Ben is at a bar in London to tell us a little bit more. So, you know what, Ben, morning to you. Already festive, obviously where you are, but I just don't know if the mood kind of matches the decorations with what's going on. Yes, you're quite right. I think that pretty much sums up how business owners are feeling because, of course, the huge problem for them right now is that there is not a lockdown. Uh, the rules have not changed officially, but many people choosing instead to stay away. So this place looking particularly festive, but the problem is, are there going to be the customers to appreciate all the work that they've done here? And for the hospitality industry, they're hoping to hear from the Chancellor later about some support, maybe a bit of extra help that might be offered to get them through this period. And it's so important, of course, Christmas. We often talk about it, but just to put a figure on it, they, many hospitality firms, pubs, bars, restaurants, make a quarter of their entire year's profits at this time of year. And that sees them through maybe some of the quieter, leaner months of January, February and March. But as we've touched on, uh, across the industry, there were three million bookings that were cancelled. Uh, and that is because people are thinking, hang on, maybe I'll stay at home a bit longer. And that might mean that my Christmas plans go off without a hitch, that they don't catch anything. Uh, and that equates to £297 million worth of trade that has been lost in the industry ahead of Christmas at such a lucrative time. And for people who own bars, restaurants and pubs, that's not great news, including Sam, who we spoke to, who runs a bar in Birmingham. It's extremely nervous times. I think, you know, under any normal circumstances, um, we probably wouldn't be necessarily that fearful. But with the previous closure of 14 months and then six months under heavy restrictions, the business simply isn't in a position um, to continue with such, you know, heavy loss of trade. And the vast majority of the hospitality sector suffers with exactly the same, you know, nerves at the moment. We're going into the Christmas period, you know, times that we are, you know, due to be spending with our own families. And we're sitting there worrying about our businesses at the moment and whether or not, you know, they're going to be able to come through this next um, challenge that's been, you know, given, given to us. So that's Sam's story in Birmingham. Let me introduce you to James, who runs this bar here at London Bridge. James, morning. Good morning. How's it been? Uh, it's been a tough week, actually. We had yesterday we had 75% of people who had cancelled based on the, the week before who had originally booked, and they, a lot of those people had booked long in advance, right? They were corporate bookings. Mm. Fortunately, people are sort of stepping up now from the smaller bookings, sort of smaller groups of, of, of friends, but um, we're, we're way down where we were supposed to be. And in some ways, you have a bit of an advantage given that it's outdoors. We're on a rooftop here, so people may be less concerned about coming somewhere. Yeah, like for this. sure. Look, it's, it's, it's fresh out here, right? But um, those corporate bookings are probably the, the hardest ones for people to keep. So we are having people who were potentially going indoor venues who are now sort of coming to us. Um, but it's, you know, it takes a bit of time to sort of build those bookings back up. And what does it mean in terms of how you plan, particularly things like how many staff you're going to need, but then stock, you know, buying in the food and drink to feed and water all the people that come here? How do you plan that? Well, we get, we get food in daily, right? So we, we base on it being a full venue. If people cancel the day before, obviously it makes it a little tricky for us. Uh, we're running a full staff, right? We're expecting it to be a Christmas busy period. Yeah, and you opened, what, a year ago, 12 months we ago. Are, yeah. So you've had quite a ride this we, last we year. Had, no, we took a, took a bit of a gamble. We, we built during, uh, you know, when we were, we were going into sort of a, a lock, lockdown a year ago. Yeah. Opened for a week, got shut down by the, by the government. Uh, we were closed for a few months. Had a, had a good summer. It was a lot of fun, but it was pretty rainy. Yeah. Um, obviously, coming through to Christmas, we were, we were expecting another busy period but that just hasn't hasn't been what we were quite hoping for yeah and as i said in the introduction there this is the time when you should be making most of your money that gets you through the rest of the year we know the chancellor's flying back from the us to try and have talks with business leaders what could he offer what help would you need i mean the vat reduction was useful um but at the end of the day if people aren't coming then it's, it doesn't make much difference um you know as you know we were really hoping to be busy now january was going to be relatively quiet anyway so you know if they're putting us into a lockdown through words, then you know VAT is not going to not going to do too much. And how confident are you that you can keep going given everything that's going on? 
I mean, we have to cut down hours if, if you know, if things continue to be like it is. Mm. Um, it just depends on, you know, people's perception of if they can come out or not. Yeah, we'll uh, keep a very close eye on it. James, for now, thank you. Nice to see you. Good luck. Thank uh, you. A lot of work ahead. Um, and look, for so many business leaders, it's a very similar picture. Uh, whether you run a bar, a restaurant, a pub, or even hotels, lots of people choosing not to do city breaks, for example, because they just want to stay at home and make sure that their Christmas plans can uh, go ahead as planned. So lots of concern for the industry at what should be a really busy time of year. The trees are here. The decorations are here. The customers, it seems, for many businesses just are not. Uh, ben, I just wonder you, if you could uh, uh, just quickly ask the, the, your bar owner there. We, you, you well know Rishi Sunak mm. coming back. A lot of questions about what the government could do. Uh, is there a list of things that they, that they would want now to help with the, the problems they're facing? Yeah, I think he was just explaining to me just a second ago about a VAT cut. I mean, an extension of that VAT cut, because you remember during the pandemic itself, uh, VAT was cut to help a lot of businesses get through the worst of this. But as the economy began to reopen over the summer and into the autumn, that VAT cut was re, uh, was cancelled. It was uh, the uh, reduction started to gradually phase back in. So it meant that firms were paying more tax again. So I think that's one of the things that they're really hoping for. I don't think we're at the stage yet of sort of furlough being reintroduced or maybe business loans as they were in the depths of the crisis. But I think a little bit, I mean, a 20 percent uh, cut in VAT could make a huge difference and could be the difference for a lot of firms that I've spoken to over the last 48 hours between surviving well into the new year or actually finding that they've got to close a little bit more permanently. Ben, thanks very much. Now we know closures and restrictions affect many industries. The Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, is under pressure to hold more talks and offer help with business leaders. That's what Ben's looking at this morning um, in London. Now, Ben... View of the train station over there, London Bridge, a busy train station. That's another kind of business that has been, is going to be seeing changes. Yeah, good morning to you both. I just wanted to show you our vantage point here at London Bridge because the station probably tells you the story of the rest of the city and that's because that place uh, should be packed at rush hour this morning, but it's not. A lot of people choosing to work from home and that has huge consequences for towns and city centres across the country. And for hospitality firms in particular, they are feeling that at a time when they should be making a lot of money uh, in this lucrative Christmas period. Uh, and just to run you through the numbers, uh, hospitality firms, so bars, restaurants and hotels, make a quarter of all of their annual profits at this time of year before those maybe leaner months of January, February and March when we may not be out quite as much. But the problem is there's been a lot of cancellations. Three million bookings were cancelled last week alone, and that's because people choosing to stay at home rather than to come out and maybe jeopardise any plans that they had for Christmas. And that comes at a huge price for the industry. £297 million in lost trade in the run-up to Christmas. And that will be felt particularly keenly after what's been a very difficult year for many businesses uh, and we heard from Sam who runs a bar in Birmingham and he explained what some of those implications are for his business but also for his staff as well. It's extremely nervous times I think you know under any normal circumstances um, we probably wouldn't be necessarily that fearful but with the previous closure of 14 months and then six months under he heavy restrictions the business simply isn't in a position um, to continue with such you know, heavy loss of trade. And the vast majority of the hospitality sector suffers with exactly the same, you know, nerves at the moment. We're going into the Christmas period, you know, times that we are, you know, due to be spending with our own families. And we're sitting there worrying about our businesses at the moment and whether or not, you know, they're going to be able to come through this next um, challenge that's been, you know, given, given to us. Well, that's Sam's story in Birmingham. Let me introduce you to Kate Nichols, who's with us, uh, Chief Executive of UK Hospitality. Kate, good morning. Good morning. Just how bad is it for firms right now? It, it, it's very bad. Uh, it's a rapidly deteriorating situation. It's changing on a daily basis. But in the last 10, year, 10 wit days, we've seen 50% of bookings go, a third of revenues lost over the course of the last 10 days in the rest of the UK. It's double that in central London, so particularly acute in central London. If it carries on, we estimate hospitality could lose three to four billion pounds this December. 
Um, and the problem is, and the criticism that's been levelled at the government is that this is a lockdown in everything but name. Is that fair? Well, I think, it, you know, there is a disconnect between the political policy, the economic reality, and it's caused by consumer confidence, which has just crashed. So people are literally staying away in their droves, and that's where it's, it's slipping on a daily basis. So we need to see, this has happened very rapidly, we need to see urgent and rapid support put in place to compensate these businesses as if it was a lockdown. We need to get the economic reality, the political policy aligned. Now, I know you've been in those meetings with government ministers, haven't you, uh, on behalf of hospitality firms. What are they telling you about whether there will be support forthcoming. Well, at the moment, they're in listening mode. We've had extensive discussions with the Treasury Ministers, with the Chancellor, with the Business Secretary over the course of the last 10 days on a daily basis to keep them abreast of the situation uh, and to start talking about the support that is needed. They're listening. They've said they'll go away and think about what they need to do to get this businesses through what will be a very difficult four to six weeks and crucially sustain them through January and February when we don't get very much revenue in at all, even in the good times, those are lean periods. Yeah, and what is the reality then? If there is no extra support, if there's no extra help, what does it mean for firms like this? If there is no extra support and help, we are undoubtedly going to see many more hospitality businesses go to the wall. We lost one in 10 during the COVID crisis. We could see as many again fail over the course of the next year, particularly with quarter one being such a, a difficult time to get through. So you will see tens of thousands of business fail and hundreds of thousands of jobs lost. Um, a lot of people will be looking right now and say there is not an endless money pit. There is not uh, you know, money forthcoming for a lot of things. The government has to prioritise where it will target help. Does it have to be hospitality? Well, I think it, if you're asking hospitality to bear a disproportionate burden and you are effectively closing them down and restricting their trading at what is such a crucial time of the year, you do need to make sure you've got support. I suppose the government would say they're not doing that. It's people <laughs> that are choosing to do it. People are choosing to do it, but the economic reality is the same. Either you let these businesses go to the wall, you let this important economic sector fail and, and you have a slower economic recovery when we come out of Omicron in the new year uh, and you have fewer taxes that are coming through. Let's not forget hospitality is the third largest employer. It generates £40 billion pounds a year in taxes. That funds vital public services. The economy needs us to be fighting fit and firing on all cylinders. There is no economic recovery unless hospitality recovers. How confident are you, are you that you will get it? Because we're talking about things like maybe a cut in VAT, maybe a bit of extra uh, relief on things like rent and rates. Are you confident you'll get it? I think there's three key things. Local authorities do have cash grants that they could get out. There's discretionary rate relief that could be got out the doors now. That needs to be topped up for places like London that are disproportionately hit. Longer extending the rate of VAT, the 12.5%, gives those businesses the confidence to underpin investment and get through the difficult period and, and business rates to avoid bills going out that hit cash flow. We've asked for all of those things. Ministers have taken them away to see what they can do. Kate, for now, thank you. Really nice to see you. Kate Nichols there, Chief Executive of UK Hospitality. Now, I just want to show you around this place because, my goodness, um, it's well decked out, as you can see, for Christmas. Uh, plenty of Christmas trees, plenty of tables uh, and not many customers. So they'll be really hoping that maybe this place, because it's got a bit of fresh air, it's open air, they'll be able to get some customers through the doors before the Christmas period. But nonetheless, for all hospitality businesses right now, it is a very tough time of year, one that should be one of their most lucrative, and it's proving to be very difficult indeed. Yes, Ben, thank you very much. Uh, nice to hear from them directly and also get a sense of how it's affecting businesses. There is a direct correlation between uh, the messaging from the government and the numbers that we're seeing every day. You'll be well aware yesterday that number of daily COVID infections recorded in the UK hit.